and welcome back. This is day two of Mrs. Labadi's Distance Learning. Today is Thursday, uh, April 29th, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So, we'll start off our day with our morning message. Now again, if your mom and dad have printed out the lessons that I've sent, then you have a copy of our morning message, and you get to circle those words that we circle today together. If not, that's okay. You can just watch and we'll do it together. All right. So we're going to start off with reading, then we'll go back through and we'll see what we can find. So dear first graders, I hope you are having a great week. I miss seeing all of your smiling faces. Last time we looked at main characters. Today, we will read and write about all the characters in our stories. Love, Mrs. Labadi. All right, so before we get started on those main characters and those other additional supporting characters, we're going to look at chunking. Now, last morning message, we looked at rhyming, and that's when we rhyme or have the same ending in each of our words so that they rhyme. Today, we're going to look at a chunk that is a set of letters that we put together and that we can put in other letters in order to read and spell them. So today we're going to look at the word will. Now we can rhyme with will, but today we're just going to focus on one chunk of the word and that is the I L L. The ill. So whenever we see that I-L-L, -L, we know that we can say ill for I-L-L. -L. So we're going to use that chunk to see if we can build other words. Now we can add different beginning sounds like, hmm, will, what else has an ill in it? Bill. I know a friend named Bill. And I hear that ill sound in the word bill. Where else do I hear that ill sound? Hmm. I know I've told some of my friends to sit still. And I hear that ill in the word still. So that's one word I can use using the chunk ill. So, hmm. Is there any other one? Well, in the, my backyard, I have a hill. So, and I hear that word ill in the word hill. So that's gonna help me spell the word hill. Now I have more than one, so I have hills. Now that doesn't rhyme, but I can use that ill to write the word hills. So I go huh, ill, which I know is spelled I-L-L, -L, and then hills. I hear a s at the end, so that's where I add the S. So we're using the chunk ill to build and write new words. And that's what we call chunking. All right. The next thing I want us to work on and look, look at is our blends and digraphs. Now it's been a while, so I'm going to think, what are some of my blends? That's when two letters at the beginning or in the middle or at the end of a word come together and they make a solid sound. So let's start with an easy one. We have dear first graders. That GR can be chunked together to make a blend. Grr. And we can think of other words that have a grr in it, like grapes or grow. We're going to see that blend lots and lots of places. All right, now I'm going to look through all my words, see if I see another blend. Oh, I found one. S M and if I put that together I make sm like in smiling or I could say smile or smell. Uh, that S M is a blend because it's two letters that we're pushing together to make a sound. All right. Now, like I said, a blend can come at the beginning or the end of a word. Now this is one you know a lot. St st. Now what blend makes that st st sound? Hmm. St, st. Sounds like a ST. They're right. St. 
Now that came at the end of the word last. It was last in the word last. So we can think of other words that had that ST at the end, like first or must. So blend can come at the beginning or the end. All right, next thing I wanna look at is digraphs. Now a digraph is kinda like a blend where it's two letters to make a sound, but this time a digraph has an H in it. So we're looking for the two letters that have an H in it. So, let's see. I have any digraphs today. Now, I could always look at my CH, but we don't really hear the CH sound in characters. That's an exception. But we can think of all our other H digraphs, like SH. We have CH, so we have SH and CH. So when you're reading and writing today, I want you to think of those digraphs and how can you use them in your writing. All right, so that was our morning message. That's what we worked on this morning. And now we're gonna keep going to the rest of our lesson. Because like I said, we're gonna be focusing on all of our characters today. So, last time we met, we worked on main character. We made this beautiful chart to show how we can describe our main character. Their appearance, their background, and then some of their personality. So today, we're going to be looking at more than one character. Because we just looked at the main character, the one that was mostly in the story. But today, we're going to look at more than one character. Split my chart here. All right. So today, we're going to read Chester Raccoon and the Big Bad Bully. So all you have to do is listen, and I'll do the rest. So Chester Raccoon and the Big Bad Bully. Chester Raccoon stood in front of his tree, hollow, looking gloomy. His youngest brother, Ronnie, and his best friend, Cassie, stood beside him. We don't want to go to school, Chester told his mother. We want to stay home with you. Please, may we stay home with you? I thought you liked school, said Mrs. Raccoon. We do, said Chester. Then why do you want to stay home with me? Chester lowered his head and shuffled his foot. Er, uh, oi, eh, oh, he explained in a quiet, muffled voice. Mrs. Raccoon reached out and tenderly lifted Chester's head with her hand. What did you say? Chester gazed into his mother's loving eyes and gulped. There's a bully at school. And he's horrible, cried Ronnie. He's big and mean and he has giant claws on his hands and feet, wailed Cassie. And fangs, screeched Chester, and fire comes out of his nose, and if you get in his way, he'll step on your face and squash you like a bug. Like a bug? echoed Ronnie. Oh my, he sounds very scary, said Mrs. Raccoon. Bullies can be very difficult. I'll tell you what. She told the frightened cubs, I'll walk you to the school and back. Then we can decide what to do about this bully. When the raccoons reached the school tree, Chester tugged on his mother's arms. That's him, said, that's the bully. She pointed, he pointed a trembling finger at a badger standing by a pond. Isn't he awful? Isn't he the most scary looking bully you've ever seen? Oh my, yes, whispered Mrs. Raccoon, but I'm sure we can work things out. Before leaving, she gently fluffed Chester's mask and playfully tweaked Ronnie's nose. Be brave, she told the cubs, and gave each of her sons a comforting kiss on their palms. 
So right now we're looking at all of our different characters. Can you name all the characters we've learned about? We've learned about Mama or Mrs. Raccoon, and we know about Ronnie and Cassie and Chester. And there's one more character, our bully, the Badger. Let's see if we can learn a little more about them. After school, Chester, Ronnie, and Cassie told Mrs. Raccoon how the Badger bullied his classmates at recess. First, he snatched the ball away from the squirrel and popped it. Then he climbed atop the jungle gym and squashed the possum's fingers until the possum fell to the ground. Then he spooked a doe who bumped into the skunk who got so scared that he sprayed and stunk. Even owl teacher couldn't get him to behave. So it doesn't seem like this badger friend is very nice. Let's see what's going on. Sometimes animals are bullies because they don't know any other way to be, explained Mrs. Raccoon. But I think there's a way you can change things. Go get your friends and bring them to our tree. I want to share a story. A few minutes later, a crowd of eager young forest animals stood in the ba at the base of Chester's tree house, and Mrs. Raccoon began her tale. Once a long time ago, there was a secret forest sprinkled in yellow stones. The stones were round and polished, big and little, and smooth enough to hold. Every animal in the forest collected the treasure and treasured them. One day an animal found a blue stone. It was very exciting since no animal had ever seen a blue stone, but the blue stone was rough and dull without any polish or shine and it had sharp prickly points sticking out of it, making it very hard to hold. Careful not to hurt their paws, the animals carried the stone to the center of the forest and placed it atop a tree, trunk, tree stump where everyone could see it. Perhaps the stone is blue because it popped out of the ground too soon, suggested a fox. So the animals waited and watched for many days and nights to see if the blue stone would turn yellow. But the stone remained blue, and its outer shell remained sharp and pointy. I believe the stone is blue because that is the color it is meant to be, said a very wise snake. Therefore, we shall treasure the blue stone for, for the color it is. But if we want to hold the stone we do our, as we do our yellow stones, we'll have to work together to smooth its outer shell. So first, the woodpeckers took turns chipping off the stone's sharp prickly points with their beaks. Then the chipmunks rolled the stone with their noses, while other animals shined and buffed the stone with a tree bark and fluffy tails. In time, the blue stone was as smooth and shiny as the yellow stones. Mrs. Raccoon smiled down at the young animals, listening to her story. The badger at your school is just like the blue stone, she explained to Chester and to his schoolmates. He is a badger, and that is the way he is meant to be. But if you work together, I think you could smooth out his bullying ways. The next day at school, when the recess bell rang, all of the little animals went outside together. They huddled close to one another and walked toward the bully in one great big confident pack with Chester in front holding a ball. At first the bully looked at them with a twinkle in his eye thinking, I'll get one of you. But as the pack got nearer and nearer to him without a hint of fear, the badger's expression changed. His eyes widened, his jaw dropped open, his knees grew weak and wobbly. 
Suddenly, it was the bully who was scared. He began to whimper and squeal, and he thought, they're coming to get me back. But there was nowhere to run. He just stood there with his back up against a tree as his schoolmates drew closer and closer and closer. Finally, Chester was nose to nose with the trembling badger. He narrowed his eyes and looked as serious as little furry face could allow. Then without hesitation, he held up the ball, looked straight into the bully's eyes and asked, want to play? Huh? The surprised bully stopped shaking. He looked at his classmates who were laughing and offering friendship. You want me to play with you? He squealed with delight. He gently took the ball out of Chester's hands. Okay, he told them, I'll play. So in one short moment, the badger softened and the bully became a friend. The badger didn't need to bully anyone ever again. Chester glanced toward the wooden path and saw his mother watching and smiling. She placed a kiss on her palm and showed it to her son. Chester did the same, and then they joined in the fun. What a great lesson. So that has a couple things that we can talk about. First, we can think about what did we learn from the story? Well, I learned that even with bullies, if you take the time to nurture and care and be nice, that they'll start to be nice back. So it takes time, but that's okay. But again, like I said, today we're working on characters. Now, if your mom and dad have printed out the paper, you should already have a paper that looks like this. If not, you can use a piece of lined paper, any plain old lined paper. And all I want you to do is I want you to draw one big box across the top and then try and divide it, separate it into three. So you just have to draw two lines. And when you do that, you can draw line all the way straight down, making them nice and long. And so now you have three columns, just like I have on my board back here. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're just going to write some little words or care or do some illustrations. So we have three boxes because we want to talk about multiple characters. So I'm going to use my book to help me when I write about these characters. So first things first. I'm going to use one of the main characters and one of the names that's on the front of my book, Chester, because he played an important role in this story. So I'm just going to write his name in one of the smaller boxes at the top. And you'll do the same on your lined piece of paper. Chester. Another big important character I think would have to be Mom because she shared the best advice to help them with their bully. So you can write Mrs. Raccoon. I'm just gonna write mom because that's easier to write. Mom. All right, and next, who do you think would else would be a big character that we could write about today? What about the badger, the bully? Because that's what the story is mostly about, the big bad bully. So you can write bully, or you could write the badger. I'm gonna write the badger so we can keep them straight. All right, so if you, want, if you have a different book that has even more characters to write about, you can definitely add more boxes and write about even more. But we're just gonna focus on these three. So yesterday, like I said, we looked at their appearance, their background, and their personality. So we're gonna start off doing each one and then we'll be able to look at all of our great ways to describe our characters. So if we think about our Chester, how can we describe him? Well, we know, let's start with his appearance. We know he's a raccoon. So I'm gonna write the word raccoon. Now, Remember, 
if there's any point during this lesson that you can't catch up, you just go ahead and you stop the video, write down, and then you can press play again because I'm moving pretty quickly. But So we know he's a raccoon. We could say more about what he looks like. He has gray fur. And again, if you can't write this, you can always draw it out. So I'm just gonna draw some gray fur. All right, so now let's think about how we would describe his personality. So at the beginning, he was, hmm, how did he feel about the bully? He was a bit scared, so I might put scared as part of how I would describe Chester. And I might draw a sad face so I can remember what that word is, scared. And then, well, at the end, was he scared? Did his personality change at all? Hmm, well, if I look back in my book, I can flip and I can see a picture of Chester in the bully. Now, would you describe Chester as scared in this picture? Hmm, I might describe him as brave. Because now, he's ready to face his bully and work together to play with him to make the bully nice. Alright, so we've got our appearance, our personality. Now we can think of our background. Now, background means they're gender or how they or who they are in the family or we could say their age now we don't know the age of Chester but we could say that he is a boy he's a boy raccoon and we could also say he has brothers so he is a sibling so he has a big family So those are some great ways to describe our Chester. Now we're going to go off to our next character. Our next character is Mom. She plays a big important role in this story because she gives some great advice on how to help deal with the big bad bully. So what can we say about our mom? We know if we're thinking about their appearance, we also know that she is a raccoon. She has gray fur. Sorry, I have a little friend joining us. She has gray fur. But what makes her different than Chester? Well, she's a bit bigger in size. She's a mom. She's the mommy raccoon. So we know she's a bit bigger. So that's talking a little bit about her background. So if we want to add to it, we can talk about her personality. If I look at the front, I can see how she's looking at her babies who, who they look scared, but she looks very caring. If I wanted to describe my mama, she is very caring. And we know she told a great story that taught a lesson. She helped teach us about how to make a sharp rock smooth, how to make someone nicer. So she is also helpful. You could say that she's kind. There's lots of ways that we just can describe our mama raccoon, Mrs. Raccoon. All right, so we talked a little bit about her appearance. We talked a little bit about her background, how she's the mama. And we talked a little bit about her personality. Now again, if you can't write any of these words, you can either stop the video and 
copy down the words that I've written, or you can draw pictures as I'm writing. So you could draw smiley faces, you could draw fur, you could draw a little raccoon, anything to help you recognize what we're talking about. All right, last character we're gonna talk about is our badger. Now he is our bully in this. So let's start off with his appearance. How could we describe the appearance of our badger? Well, first we can say he's a badger. And he has, it looks to be black and white fur. We can also think about how they described the badger. When they were describing him to Mrs. Raccoon, they said he had giant claws in his, on his hands and feet. So I might add that. Giant claws. And fangs. Now we do know they have sharp teeth, but do you really think that he shot fire out of his nose? Probably not. So we're gonna keep on going. So how could we talk about our badger's personality? Well, he's called a bully. So he can be, when we think of a bully, we can say he's being mean. And I might add a mean face there. He's being mean. We could say, we could use words like unkind, being not nice. We could use the word bully because that's what's written in our book. He's being mean, he's being a bully, but is he always that way? So if we flip to the very end of our book, we learn that he's not always going to be a bully. He changes and he becomes kind. For a second, he was a little scared about what those all those animals were doing around him. But then they surprised the bully and he squealed with delight. So he becomes nice. So we could be, we could say that he, in order to describe his personality, we could say he becomes nice or kind in the end. So we're looking at all the ways we could describe his personality. How is he acting? All right, and then a little bit about, about his background. Now, we don't have much on his age. We could say he's a boy. We know his gender. We don't know much about his family, but that's okay. So we don't have to write much for each of our different characters, but as long as we're paying attention and keeping track of all the ways that we could describe our characters. All right. So, again, if you were following along, you should have a full sheet all filled out, just like mine is here. And that's how we describe our characters. Now, today, we're going to work on writing as well. So, yesterday, we did some writing. I shouldn't say yesterday. Last time, we did some writing. Today, we're going to do some more writing. Now, when we write today, we are going to write about something we've learned while staying safe at home. So, maybe you've learned some new math facts. Maybe you've learned to read a certain story. Or maybe you've learned how to hmm, cook something or to make something. Maybe you made slime at home or maybe you helped mom and dad make a cake. So I want to think, how can we write to share something we've learned? I'm going to get my writing paper ready. Again, if you have your pages printed out, I have a writing paper ready for Thursday that you can use. If you don't have your pages printed out, again, that's okay. Line paper is always a good go-to. 
you could always use your line paper, but I want you to try and stay on those lines as best you can because we want to be neat and nice writers. We don't want to take up the whole page. So, and as always, before we get started on writing, we have to put our name and date. So. The body and the date is 4-25. And if you're using your line paper, put your name at the top. And the date 4-25. Now, if you want to draw a drawing box like I have on this paper, you may try and stay on the lines. Notice how I'm following the red line down, and then I'm just going to follow the blue line across, trying to make it as neat as possible. So I make a big rectangle. All right. So that's just going to be my little drawing box. I'm not going to spend much time drawing. I just want to be able to get my thoughts onto my paper. All right, so like I said, we're going to be writing about something we've learned to do or something we've learned while well, during this time at home. My little cat's gonna join us. Oh, shh. sorry, that's my dog. Ah, shh, no. All right, so I'm thinking about what I've learned to do. Something I've learned to do is to train a dog. So I have a little puppy now, and I've had to learn to train my puppy. So that means giving lots of treats and lots of commands and having lots of patience. So now yours doesn't have to be like that. Yours can be something like you made slime or you made yourself a sandwich. Something simple, that is okay. But I've learned how to train my dog. So I'm going to draw a quick picture so that I can keep track of what I'm writing about. So I'm going to draw me. And I'm going to draw a bag of treats in my hands. So there's me with my treats. Now I have to draw my little puff. Now remember, your picture does not have to be perfect. Mine is simple, just little. Now, I, my puppy is small still, so. We're working hard every day to learn how to sit, stay, and run. I might dra draw the sun, because we've had some wonderful bright days outside. Might draw a little tennis ball because he loves to play fetch now. And I can always add more to my picture later, but now I want to get to my drawing. Now, as always, when we start a new story or start something new, we want to make sure we have those sequence words. So, one of the sequence words I used last time was one day because I was telling you about something I did. During quarantine, and one day, I made a garden. Well, now I'm talking about something I've learned. So I want to put it in order. So I'm going to write first. Because I want to say the first thing I did when I started training my new puppy. First, I got... First, I got treats for the puppy, and then I'm going to use another sequence word because I'm going next in my story. So then, I had him sit in front. When I'm training my dog, I'm thinking, well, I had to get him to come to me. I had my treat. I had him sit. I said, good boy. I said, sit and good boy. That's to teach him that that means sit. 
Then I had him sit in front of me. I said, sit. And good boy. And gave him a treat. All right. So first, next, then I can say next if you have a next part. But I'm going to say finally. Or you can say last. When I say sit, he knows to sit on his bottom. Now, remember, your story does not have to be really detailed. It can just be coupled sentences. I only had about four sentences in my story, and mine's not great. I could go into a lot more detail, but we're just getting started on all our writing. So I just want you to write about something that you've learned to do. Maybe you've learned to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Maybe you've learned to tie your shoes. I want you to tell me all the steps that you have to take to do that thing. So you're writing to tell me what you've learned. So this would be a good time to stop the video and so that you could go do your writing. But if you're gonna keep watching, we're gonna keep moving. All right, so that was our writing for today. Next, like yesterday, we have to do our own reading time. So yesterday, not yesterday, last time, I asked you to get two steps, that's 15 minutes each, a total of 30 minutes, two steps of your own reading. So today I'm gonna to read a short story and we're gonna see if we can read for fun. And that's what we did yes, last time. We tried to read for fun. So now we're gonna keep reading for fun. This is called Chicken on Vacation. Zoe burst into the barn. Pack your hat, Sam, she said. We're going to the beach on a beach vacation. We'll swim, we'll build sand castles, we'll find buried treasure. What about lunch, asked Sam. You didn't mention lunch. I packed a picnic, said Zoe. Why didn't you say so, asked Sam. Let's go. Where are you going? asked Pip. On vacation, said Zoe. Come to the beach with us. Will there be crabs? asked Pip. Crabs can pinch. I'll protect you, said Zoe. No pinching on my watch. Look at the ocean, said Zoe. I see the pond, said Pip. Look at the beach, said Zoe. I see dirt, said Pip. Pip swam in the pond. Sam swam in the mud. Zoe swam Zoe style. You're on the dock, said Pip. Not the dock, said Zoe. A surfboard. So are they really at the beach? But they're using their imagination. Sam shook. It is time for lunch, he asked. Is it time for lunch, he asked. Time for sandcastles, said Zoe. I brought tools. Pip built a short castle. Sam built a wide castle. Zoe built a Zoe castle. My kingdom is grand, said Zoe. My kingdom is messy, said Pip. 
My kingdom is for lunch, said Sam. I found something, said Pip. A map, said Zoe. It leads to buried treasure. In lunch, asked Sam, but Zoe was already off. Where's the treasure, asked Sam. I see the tractor, said Pip. Not the tractor, said Zoe, a lookout tower. Zoe climbed to the top. I see the treasure, she, she said. It's that way. I see an old fence, said Pip. Not a fence, said Zoe, a shipwreck. A shipwreck, asked Sam. The treasure must be nearby. I see a rock, said Pip. Not a rock, said Zoe, a giant crab. It is a giant crab, said Pip. I'll pin it'll pinch me. I'll protect you, said Zoe. Take that, crab. You scared it, said Sam. You saved me, said Pip. Told you I would, said Zoe. And there's the treasure. Pie, squealed Sam. The treasure is pie. Ready for our picnic, asked Zoe. I'm always ready, said Sam. While Sam and Pip enjoyed pie, Zoe made plans for tomorrow. So that was chicken on vacation. Again, I want you to earn two steps. That's 30 minutes of your own reading time. If you don't have books on, at home, you can always go on, go on Get Epic. And if you have the lesson, you can always pull it up, Get Epic, and log on using our class code right there. If you don't have it, just pause the video right now and type that into Get Epic. And there's lots of books for you to read on there. All right, so pause the video, go do your reading. If not, we're gonna keep on moving into our math time. All right, so. All right, friends, it's math time. So last time we met, last video, you worked on 2D and 3D shapes. We were just doing a little review. Now today, we're gonna to be working on what we call halves and quarters. Now I'm gonna teach you all about that. But before we get started, let's get those math brains working and we're gonna do a little fluency. Now, last time we met, we worked on our plus one and plus two facts. Today, we're gonna to work on plus three and plus four facts. Now, if your mom and dad have printed out the lesson, you should have a sheet that looks like this, that has all your plus three facts, and then lots of blanks for you to fill it in yourself, and then your plus four facts for you to fill it in yourself. If you don't have it printed out, that's okay. We can use our line paper. So what we wanna do, we're gonna do our plus three facts first. So we're gonna do three plus one equals and just write that. If you wanna write it small so it fits on one line, you can do that too. So three plus two equals, see how I wrote it smaller so it fits in the line. Three plus three equals, three plus four equals, three plus five equals. So notice how I'm just increasing the second, add in the second let number by one, we're just going up, but we're doing plus three each time. And we're gonna go all the way to three plus 20. I know, it's a lot, but I promise you, it will help you remember all of those math facts. So once you go through and write down all your three plus addition sentences, you can go through and answer. So three plus one, hmm. I can always count on, so three, put three in my head, I'm gonna count on one, three, four, four. All right, three plus two, I'm gonna put three in my head. Three, 
four, five. I counted up two and I ended on five. So three plus two equals five. Three plus three I know is six. Three plus four, hmm. Another strategy I can use is my fingers. So I can do one, two, three. Now I'm gonna count on four more. One, two, three. All right, now I get to count on my fingers. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's how I can use my count on strategy. Put it in your head and count up until you have that many fingers or try and use your magic math fingers or we can draw our circles. That's another strategy. So if I have three plus five, I can do one, two, three circles plus one, two, three, four, five circles. And then I can go through and count all my circles. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, eight. So three plus five equals eight. So you're doing all of that all the way to 20. And that's for all your three plus facts. Now, I know it's a lot. It's gonna be okay. It's the only math facts you have to do. It's good practice. Now we're gonna do our four plus facts. So four plus one equals four plus two equals four plus three equals and so on and so on just like we did with our three plus so it'll start looking like that you're just putting four plus and then increasing your number all the way to 20 what is that all the way to 20 because we got to learn all the way to 20 for first grade so and again we can use our count on strategy we can use our magic math fingers or our circles to answer. So four plus one equals five. Four plus two equals six. Four plus three equals seven. All right, and you go all the way and keep on going all the way to 20. And then next week, we'll do our fluency with subtraction. It's good practice, I promise. So pause here and go ahead and get your fluency done. All right, now if your parents have printed out the lesson, you will have an application problem, a word problem that you can do on your own. If you don't have it printed out, that's okay. We're gonna move on. So like I said, we're dealing with halves and quarters. So all you need right now is a piece of paper. That's all you need, blank piece of paper. So we're looking at halves. Now halves is when we divide something whole. So we have a whole piece of paper. This is one whole. We got a whole piece of paper. It's not broken. It's not ripped up. It is one whole piece of paper. Now, if we take this one whole piece of paper and we fold it in half, hamburger style. So I'm gonna line up my edges. And I'm folding it. This is called to fold in half. So now it's half sheet. But if I open it up, it's still one hole. But now I have this line down the middle. I'm gonna use my pencil or my marker and I'm gonna write on that line. So now I have one, two parts of my one hole because it's still a whole piece of paper I haven't cut it I haven't chopped it up it's still a whole piece of paper but now I've folded it so that I have two parts and they are the same size because this part is the same size as this part one's not bigger than the other they're the exact same size we call these halves when it's split into two parts, we call it one half. And I want you to write this on your piece of paper. So we have our one whole is split into half. So we use this as the half symbol because we have one split into two parts. So we have one big box split 
we have the split into two parts. So one half. We have half a part. So one half, one half equals one whole. So we have one whole split into two parts. And that equals half. So if I just covered this up, this is half of my paper. And this is half of my paper. And when I put those two halves together, it equals one whole. All right, following along. All right, so let's see if we can divide up some of our shapes into halves. So remember, a half is when they're the same size. So if I have, if I cut this circle along that line, is that the same size as this? Mm -mm. So that's not split in half. So let's look at another circle. What if I did it like this? Is this top part the same size as this bottom part? It looks like it. It looks like I just folded it. So yep, yeah, that is one half. Because so, we have one whole circle split into two parts. So I have one whole circle split into two parts. And that makes a half. Half and half make a whole or a whole circle. Let's try it with another shape. What if I had a triangle? We remember our triangles. Now, if I cut it here, well, let's look. I have that shape and that shape. Are they the exact same shape? Mm -mm. So is this split in half? Are they two, are they the same size? Mm -mm. So that is not split in half. That is not half a shape. Let's try again. Well, what if I split it in half? Is that half? Well, let's look. If I cover up the bottom part, it looks like a little triangle. If I cover up the top part, does that look like a little triangle? Do they look the same? Because they have to be the exact same on both sides to be equal halves. So this is not the same as this. So just because it's drawn down the middle does not make it the same. So that's not equal halves either. Let's try one more time. All right, we've got our triangle, our whole triangle. Let's see if we can split it in half. All right, let's try it. If I cover up one side, well, I got that size sheet. And if I cover up the other side, I have that. Is that the same as that? Could I just fold it and they'd be perfectly lined up? Yep. So that are equal halves. That is split correctly. So that's one half, one half. It's one whole split into two parts. And that's what we call halves. So these are, that's dealing with halves. All right, next thing we're gonna learn about is quarters. Now you might be thinking about the quarter of money. This is a different kind of quarter. But we can kind of relate it because how many quarters do you need to make a whole dollar? Hmm. Well, I need 25, 50, 70. I need four quarters to make one dollar. So how many things, how many times do you think how many quarters are in a whole, do you think? Hmm, four. So we're gonna start off with our piece of paper and we're gonna use one whole because we have one whole piece of paper. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half again. So that we have two equal parts. All right. So we just fold it in half. I want you to flip it over and I want you to draw on that line. So now we have two equal parts. But you said four. We're doing quarters. So we're going to take our one hole. And now we're going to fold it the other way. So now we're going to fold it long ways, hot dog style. Line up your lines. Make a little crease. And now you have a new line. And I want you to draw on that line. So now when you have your hole, flip it over. How many parts do you have now? Four parts. So I took one hole, I split it into four parts. So remember, I have one hole, it's still together, I haven't cut it up, and now it's in four parts. So go ahead and label each of your boxes as a quarter or one fourth. One split in by four ways, one hole split four ways. So this is what we call a quarter. And I'm going to write that out for you. Quarter. We have a quarter. So, and notice how each of my boxes are the same size. They're the exact same. For them to be quarters, they have to be the exact same size. Exact same shape. Just like we tried with our hash. So let's do our quarters. Again, I'm going to take a circle. And what did I do first? I split it in half so that they're two equal parts. And then I'm going to split that in half again to make it four equal parts. So this, all of the sides, all of the splits are in the same shape. So that is one quarter. Now if I had a circle and I split it like this, I have one, two, three, four parts. Did I split it into quarters? Nope, because if you look, this little triangle is not the same size as this big piece right here. And they have to be all the same size for them to be equal, for them to be quarters. So this one, not split into quarters correctly. All right, let's try a square because we remember our squares from yesterday. Again, we wanted to split into four equal parts. Well, let's see, I can split it like that. One, two, three, four. Does that split equally? Are they the same size shape? Nope, not split into four. All right, let's try again. I've got a rectangle or a square, and I want to split it into four. So I'm going to split it. Well, now I want to split it into four pieces. Well, let's look. One, two, three, four. Well, there's four pieces. Now, is each piece the same size? My drawing is not perfect. But yeah, they are. So just because it's split like this and not like this doesn't mean it's not in the force because they're still the same size. They're still equal pieces. So you can split into force different ways. So this is, yes, it is split into force because they are equal in the same size. Now we can look at what we remember. We have split in half split into fours. So, are they the same size? Yep. So this is quarters. And that means when it's one whole split into four pieces. So, halves is one whole split into two pieces. And quarters, just like you need four quarters to get one dollar, you split a whole piece of paper or a whole shape into four parts. 
All right, and that is halves and quarters. So if you want extra practice on halves and quarters, if you look on the lesson, I have added a star fall activity that works with a pizza and looking at halves and quarters. How can you split your pizza? And if you have it printed out, I also included this worksheet that has you draw a line to split the following shapes into halves and quarters. So I want to see if you can split some of these shapes into halves. Remember, they have to be equal shape on both sides. They can't be unequal. So that's all I have for you today. Happy learning. There's also for the ELA, there is some extra um, blends and digraphs that you can work on while you're at home. And if you have any questions, type me a message. And if you did any of this amazing work, I want your parents to take a picture and send it to me. All right, have a great day. Bye guys.